Jeff, um, we think about you just top lined all these monster operating elements inside of HHS. Would you like to give us a use case that you'd like to highlight in one of those areas? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I think um, it, it, it should be emphasized that at HHS, we are a department of AI optimists, and there's really a growing recognition across the department that AI can have profoundly important um, impacts on our missions. And I love that term, a, AI optimist. Yeah, well, and, you know, I think we, we've got about 160 or so um, use cases in the inventory, and we're actively going through a refresh, and I suspect that number uh, will increase uh, substantially. Probably, um, but I really want to. I, I really want to highlight a policy that that comes from my home program at ASTP, which is uh, with the ONC Health IT Certification Program. So, if you're not familiar, uh, the ONC Health IT Certification Program is a voluntary program that regulates electronic health records or EHRs used by more than 96% of our nation's hospitals and roughly 80% of our nation's office-based physicians. And our program adopts standards and discrete outcome-focused functionality requirements referred to as certification criteria that support foundational capabilities across healthcare delivery. Uh, and these include capabilities to send and receive clinical documents, capabilities to prescribe pharmaceuticals electronically, uh, capabilities to connect patients uh, to their data via portal or standardized API and, and mobile apps, as well as capabilities to support clinical decision-making. And really over the last several years, we've seen an explosion in the use of AI in healthcare delivery and, and the digitization that health, of health data using certified EHRs has played a central role. Um, certified EHRs generate, access, exchange, and use uh, data that is necessary to power AI applications, and they provide a means to deliver predictive and, and generative AI outputs to clinician users. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're AI optimists, and on the surface, these are all really positive developments. Uh, numerous tools have emerged, such as those that predict the onset of sepsis, the likelihood of cardiovascular disease, um, tools that anticipate hospital readmissions. Uh, and these tools can, can predict whether a patient is even likely to show up for an appointment uh, and translate clinical visits into billable clinical notes. Uh, so these are all important developments. However, we noticed and uh, confirmed over the course of a multi-month exploration into the use of AI in healthcare that there are widespread concerns regarding unfair bias, inaccuracies, and safety. And, and these concerns were inhibiting the widespread use of predictive decision support tools. Hmm. Um, clinicians simply didn't trust these tools and were concerned about AI being a black box. Uh, they had no way to understand or judge the quality of predictive decision support tools, and we saw this as a major barrier. Um, and unfortunately, researchers over the last several years have demonstrated that all of these sorts of tools are capable of bias and inaccuracies negatively impacting patients based on their race or based on their gender and, and in ways, importantly, that could have been prevented. So in January of this year, ASTP finalized first of its kind transparency requirements for AI and ML enabled decision support tools that are supplied as part of certified developers products. Um, think of this policy as a nationwide mandate for nutrition facts labels for AI and ML enabled decision support tools. Uh, these requirements establish a nationwide baseline of information that can help clinicians understand how an AI or ML enabled decision support tool was designed, developed, tested, evaluated, and should be used within a, a given clinical care environment, whether that's the ICU or pediatrics or cardiology or pulmonology or et cetera. So this policy requires certified developers to give users access to kind of 31 data points, uh, metrics, and descriptions uh, for each predictive and generative decision support tool they supply as part of their products. And this will allow users to determine whether the tool is fair, appropriate, valid, effective, and safe for use uh, on their patients. Uh, the policy also requires developers to apply risk management practices to these decision support tools as well as publish summary information of how uh, data are acquired, managed, and used for these tools. Um, so we're, we're pretty excited about this as a, as a way to both um, underscore our excitement for the use of these tools in this field, but also 
ensure that these tools can be used responsibly and safely. And, and we think that transparency is going to be prerequisite uh, for any additional policy that the department undertakes, uh, whether it's at the FDA or whether it's elsewhere uh, within the department. 